So a lot of people don't know the story behind me and Donna, so I'm gonna give you some history. So me and Donna are kind of newlyweds. We got married October of last year, and we met at a place called River Ranch, which is an RV resort. And uh, we've just kind of hit it off and, you know, the love of my life. I don't know what else to say. But um, the reason why we came to Hernando Beach is because we have other RVer friends that came here and they ended up buying what they call a beach house. They invited us down for the weekend to come check it out. So we drove the truck camper down here and stayed in their driveway. Y'all probably seen that video, Mooch Docking in Hernando Beach. That's where we stayed. And uh, we were here for the weekend and we loved the area so much. <laughs> we ended up buying a house. So that's the house that we bought over here on the canal system. And the reason that that kind of happened is because we were actually supposed to go to Alaska this year. But what, when we were getting our elevation off grid truck built, I think the Liquid Springs camping uh leveling system hadn't it, it kept postponing it postponing it so it kept postponing our truck and um i sold our f450 to the ford dealership here because dualies are just hard to get down here and they gave me what i thought was a very fair deal so we ended up selling it thinking we sold it in february thinking that we were going to get our truck in March, but we didn't you know, get it, get our truck until the end of June. So we ended up buying here. I don't know, it was kind of spur of the moment, it was the right thing to do. And uh, we, got, we found a really good price on a place. And we've been stuck here, not stuck, but we've been kind of stuck here since like um, December waiting on the truck to be built. Um, so that's when we bought was in December. And we're leaving well, we're going to court site in February, and then from there, we're, we're not coming back to the East Coast for like 10 months. Um, we also have a cabin up in North Georgia by Helen, if anybody knows where that is. And uh, so we got a cabin up there and uh, the house down here. We used to be kind of full-time RVing, and, but then we decided to, I mean, we just fell in love with the area. What are you gonna do, right? So we bought it and we thought about turning it into an Airbnb when we leave. We haven't quite decided what we're gonna do with it yet. But, uh, you know, our friends and family, you know, they're, they use our cab probably more than what we do, especially when we're gone. Uh, Donna's got six boys and they're all, uh, well, th three, three of them are local. So they, they come quite a bit and visit and uh, use the facilities. But uh, that's kind of the story behind me and Donna. So I'm really looking forward to getting back on the road. I really miss that lifestyle. But I also love the lifestyle of being able to stop being on the road. I think everybody can kind of relate to that. So we're very fortunate to be where we're at in our lives right now. Hey guys, I'm gonna give you some video of the canal systems in Hernando Beach, Florida. It's very beautiful here. It's very quiet. I'm thinking it's about 8.30 on a Sunday morning. You guys are kind of figuring out what kind of kayak we're in. We're in a Hobie pedal. And we also have an electric motor on here. Great fishing around here. The Gulf of Mexico is literally, I don't know, a couple hundred yards where we're at right now. So this is a boating community. A lot of people refer to it as Old Florida. A lot of these houses have been here for a long time and because of the area people will buy the smaller one-story houses 
knock the house down because they just want the land and then build you know big big houses like this over here and there's some more down here also the, the property the lots themselves aren't very big i think the average one's around nine thousand square feet and they range anywhere from three hundred to five hundred thousand dollars, depending on the location and um, the seawall and stuff like that. The seawall is the wall that's along the sides here, and that prevents you know the tide from coming in. There's about a three and a half foot tide that comes through here. Straight ahead is the Gulf, so that's how far it is. And where we're at is like about an hour north of Tampa. And if you've ever heard of Wiki Wachi, where the mermaids are, um, we're like five miles from there. And uh, great, great kayaking all through, through this area. Lots of um, spring fed uh, rivers and stuff like that. So quiet and peaceful. It's really cool to come out here at sunrise or even sunset so we're like right in the middle of the canal there's no boats coming behind us right now so i don't have to get over this house right over here let's see if i can get my finger to point at it this black and white one they just recently finished completion on that one and we were told it was six million dollars i'll try to get a better shot of it actually that's the owners the boat right there are the owners of of that house that's some of their they have a, a staff that works there here again so a lot of these houses are what they call hurricane proof behind that colored wall is a uh, swimming pool the dock here goes all the way around this here and it's sitting on three lots so you know just the land itself is worth one and a half to two million dollars These are all canals, canal systems. So there's more canals there. We're continuing to go out. Like I said, it was like maybe 200 yards from where we're at to the Gulf. And straight ahead is the Gulf of Mexico. So the last storm that came through was Debbie and uh, the water got up. Um, if you see this house over here on the right, it's two story over here, and you can see the seawall. So the water got up about, it rose about five feet. So it was above their seawall walking space over there. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Kind of show you how high it gets. So where we're at, it, uh, it came up about four feet, four, four to five feet. It didn't come in um, to the house last year's storm there's a lot of flooding here so this place hasn't been hit in like 30 years and uh the last last couple seasons it's, it's been tough for people here you'll see a lot of people doing construction where they've knocked down the flooded homes sold the land and then doctors lawyers stuff like that have moved in and picked up the land and building houses like you can see this one right over here it's gonna be a beautiful home so they look like they're three stories they're actually not they're only two stories but they have to be built 14 feet in the air 
so the bottom one is actually a blowout those walls are blowout so when the if it does flood the walls will blow out keeping the uh the pillars there to keep the house from uh, falling but a lot of people will close them in and make them um you know livable but uh they're not insured uh, the insurance won't, won't cover the, the first floor. So straight ahead is the Gulf of Mexico. We'll turn around and come over here. We're in the channel right now. As you can tell by the day markers. But you'll see dolphin and manatees and uh, you'll even see bull sharks through here. This is where they pup them. Where that means, you know, they, they give birth to them. The dolphins will bring their um, newborns in here, their babies, and they'll teach them how to hunt, uh, getting the fish up against, they trap the fish up against the seawalls and stuff like that. This building right here to the right is the Hernando Beach Clubhouse. And they have a lot of functions there. It's pretty cool, pretty cool area. Cost, uh, that's around $300 a person a year to join. They have a bar, they, they do dinners and stuff like that and live bands every weekend. They also do like aerobics and dance classes and they have a game night. This weird looking house over here on the, on the right, that's what they call a hurricane proof house. It's built out of nothing but steel and concrete. And they just recently finished completion of that. I don't think the people have moved in yet. But most of the people around here, this is like their second, third house. A lot of people are snowbirds that, that have property here. They come here during the winter leave in the summer because it's freaking hot here in the summertime it's it's been averaging 95. this is a no wake zone in here so it's pretty safe for kayaks every once in a while you'll have an idiot that uh you know somebody that shouldn't be driving a boat driving a boat and swamping other people but uh it's fairly fairly good you just have to be aware of your surroundings and who's around you. Kind of give you an idea what the houses look like over here. Like I said, it's a very beautiful area. Fishing, tarpon, redfish, trout. Guy going out in the boat. So believe it or not, right where I'm at, the water is, well, the tide's going out. So I'm probably sitting in about four feet of water, four or five feet of water. Where that boat is going out right there, it's about eight feet of water. So right now we're like right on the edge of the channel. And the canal system was built here. Um, it was a limestone quarry. I forgot what years, but it was a limestone quarry and uh, they dug out everything, you know, and they, they turned it into where, the, where they were mining. They basically, they were straight lines and um, they ended up letting the water come in somehow and it ended up flooding out when they, and that's when they were done mining, of course. And uh, um, that's how the canal system was made. Usually the water is pretty clear. Um, the sun's still not fully up, so you really can't see. I, I'm in about maybe two feet of water right here. And uh, you really just, I can see it, but I don't think it would show good on the camera. So where that boat is going out right there, that's the main channel. Let's see if I can, there we go, that's the main channel. And he's going out 
out there and uh, there's an area called the flats and that's where all the locals go to party they'll have um they got like a uh, food boat and they also have a uh, a guy that drives around his boat selling popsicles and like alcoholic and non-alcoholic popsicles. And um, um, Labor Day weekend, they put they have a band out there on a barge, actually on a on a, a pontoon boat. And uh, it's pretty cool. So it's called the flats because it's just a sandy bottom, and even at high tide, you're looking at maybe three three and a half feet. So you can wade in the water. At low tide, it'll get down to about a foot. So a lot of people. You know, especially newbies, they'll get stranded out there until the tide comes in because they went too far in and uh, their their draft, you know, got them stuck in the sand until the water comes up. But um, most people around here have flat bottom boats because the water is so shallow. The area of Florida here, they say for every mile that you go away from land is a foot of water. So basically 20 feet of, or uh, 20 miles from land here is the max step is around 20 feet. That's why um, hurricanes, typically the winds miss this area. It's the flood, the, the storm surge that they worry about here because they're so shallow here, the water has no place to go but to go in. So that's typically what does all the damage around here. It's not, not, not so much well, wind damage. This, like I said, is a beautiful area. Around, I don't know, noon, it's going to be crazy. You know, there's all, all, be all kinds of boats out here, jet skis, whatnot. A lot of people will do sunset cruises around here. So they'll get their friends and they'll get pontoon boats. Actually, I should correct that. Say tritunes. Tritunes are very popular here. They're more st stable, and uh, so a lot of people will go out what they call sunset cruises. And they'll come out, you know, they'll have like hors d'oeuvres and their cocktails and stuff like that, and sit out here in the channel or out there in the flats where I was pointing out earlier, and uh, watch the sunset. It's very beautiful here for, for that kind of stuff. So I'm in about. Uh, it's probably about five feet of water right here. And if you can see this dock right here, you can see that from the last storm that they still haven't fixed the dock. See how it's all jacked up. And there's a lot of Airbnbs. So if you want to come to the area, you can, there's a lot of Airbnbs around here. A lot of them will accommodate RV rigs. rigs. But, uh, morning. So most of them will have swimming pools and stuff like that. And a lot of them will have a pretty decent size of uh, uh, driveways. So, you know, I mean, if you got, I've seen 40, 45 footers in some of these places, but that, that'd be pushing it. If you were in a smaller, you would have no problem. The boondocking area uh, around here, not so much. Um, they kind of frown upon it. There's a couple of spots that you can you can check out I, i'd rather not put on here because i don't want to blow up the areas um but if you're really curious you could always uh make a comment in the uh and i'll and i'll i'll send you the information morning good man how y'all and uh but there's not a whole lot of boondocking so just be prepared for that the prices around here for the airbnbs or run probably anywhere from like 130 to 400 dollars a night depending on how big of a home you're getting and where it's at but a, a lot of the 400 dollar homes a night will accommodate you know 15 to 20 people so if you've got a group of people it's definitely the way to go it's a lot cheaper to get in a hotel room when you really think about it so over here on the left is the mangoes mangroves my donna's gonna yell at me because i always say mangoes but that's where the redfish are at so you go try to zoom out a little bit you zoom or you go that way around and it shallows up so what you do is you use google maps and uh believe it or not and you can zoom in on the area over there and um you look for the uh dark water 
uh, in Google Maps, and that's where the holes are at. So typically the water is going to be about a foot deep, and then the holes will be anywhere from three to six feet deep. And that's where the reds are held up in, waiting for the bait fish to come in, and that's where they eat them. Um, so that's how you kind of find them. Finding them and catching them are two different things, though. Now, if you see right here, you'll see this guy coming out right there. Let's see if I can zoom in somehow. It's hard to do with the chest mount, but uh, he was probably just over there fishing. Now, the blue crabbing over here is phenomenal. We have three crab traps that we set out, and um, we set them off the dock and set them out on Sunday and pick them, you know, and I usually check them out <clears throat> every day. And, and get the crabs that are in them out and I'll put them in a live crab trap basically uh, and then uh, catch some pinfish throw it in there so they can have some food to eat and then over the week we'll have a good amount of crab so we'll do like a crab fest and uh, have friends over and uh, whatnot we'll, we'll usually uh, um, steam them outside and pick some crab shrimping is a big industry here Straight ahead where you can't probably see up the channel is one of the marinas for the shrimp boats. And believe it or not, the shrimping industry here is all about bait shrimp and the, or the smaller shrimp. And they don't even sell them here locally. They sell them, they pack them up and sell them up in New York and or, or to China. Um, so you would think being on the coast you would have all kinds of opportunity to go buy fresh seafood. That's not the case. It really isn't. It's kind of discouraging. But um, there's a couple of places that you can go to, but you, you have to kind of watch what they have. Kind of give you an idea of what some of these houses look like. You'll see anything from late 60s early 70s decor all the way up to modern stuff got a boat coming up on my left here you can smell the salt in the air it's actually a really nice breeze I'm thinking it's probably maybe 85 degrees out right now. Morning. Morning. They got a pretty cool paint job on their boat. You will see all kinds of, of boating here. You'll have people that have been living here for 40 years that bought these places when they were, you know, $50,000. Now they're sitting on their retirement nest eggs. Everything south of us is, has uh, blown up in Florida, basically. It's very expensive. Anything like this in Anna Maria Island is just, you know, millions of dollars. It, and you're not going to find anything available. Um, it's it's uh, it's definitely a very unique area here. A lot of people have never heard of Hernando Beach, and the biggest city from to us right here is Spring Hill. And it's kind of cool because this is like a boating rural area, but Walmart is literally like five miles from here, so. There's only one, there's one way in, way, one way out to get out here, basically. And uh, so a lot of people don't come through here. So we don't get a lot of traffic back in here. Actually, they're actually turning it into a golf cart community <laughs> on the main roads. They're going to lower the speed, speed, uh, speed limit down to 30 miles an hour and allow golf carts to, to, to traverse. Because there's all kinds of restaurants and bars and shopping and stuff like that here. So, you know, it's a big, it, believe it or not, it's a big tourist area. Um, Wiki Wachi is stupid busy in the summertime. Highly recommend that you check it out, but highly recommend that you don't go during the summer. 
you'd best you go in when you go there when the school when schools were back in um don't go there you'll you'll, you'll wait in line for hours to get in and then once they hit capacity they shut it down so you could be waiting for two hours get to the front and they say we we'll let you in so you got to really kind of plan your trips but it's definitely worth going and it's not expensive got some ducks over here chilling that's ralph right there he's, he's the noisy one <laughs> So jet skiing is a big thing here and jet ski fishing and that's one of the jet skis we have is we have a jet ski pro and it's rigged to go fishing and you can actually take that thing offshore and uh, go fishing with it it's pritty cool so we have a tritune and two jet skis so this is me being lazy I'm using the motor as you can see I'm not pedaling we have electric electric motors on these things too which are pretty cool, especially when the tides come in or going out and you're fighting the, the, the current because the current can get pretty strong. So sometimes you'll have to um, pedal plus use your motor. So we got three ways to pro for propulsion here. We got the pedal system, we have our electric motor, and we also have the old backup paddle. But this thing will cruise at like five miles an hour, which is kind of nice. <laughs> I had to do a double take because I swore that was Trump up there. I don't know if you can see that. I'm getting, am I getting it? There it is. I thought that was Trump. <laughs> the motor, when you drive using the motor, is kind of, it's not loud, but it's, it's definitely, you definitely hear it. This here is very peaceful, just using the pedals. One of our favorite things to do, me and Donna, it goes back to when we used to live in uh, River Ranch, when we had at the RV resort there, we had lots there, and we would go down the canal systems there in the river and looking for bobbers and lures and stuff that people threw in the trees. Here. We've graduated from bobbers and lures and, and gone to buoys. <laughs> so we'll find all kinds, especially after a storm or big winds come through, you'll find all kinds of trap, crab trap buoys and uh, boat buoys and stuff like that. I've started a collection on our fence on the canal um, of buoys. And if somebody needs a buoy, I just give it to them. It's no big deal. There's plenty around here. You just hit the mangoes. Let's see if we can see the dolphin come back up over here. Had the camera off, and as soon as I did that, of course the dolphins. Let's see, they were straight up here. Let's see if we can see anything. There was only one that I saw. They used a big one. And of course, I don't see him. There he is, right there. I'll try to zoom in a little bit. Oh, I just heard one pop up behind me. You can hear them when they blow the air. right behind me dang it i can't turn they're right behind me i heard him i heard him blowing air but i wasn't sure how far they were he was literally right behind me okay they're chasing you can see the bait fish on the top of the water right here so they're chasing fish for sure they're feeding right there yep right where that big pile of bait fish was let's see if i can turn they're all over here in the seagrass, as the sign. Right there. So you can see them right there. You can see the water. Watch, watch the water. He's right below the surface. It's only like maybe three or four feet deep right there where he's at. See him? There he is, right there. He just came up. still on the top of the water He's, there's another one right there there's two of them see them 
I hope I'm getting this. There's two of them hunting. You can barely see the tip of the dorsal fins. There's two of them. kind of seeing the water right there so we're in the grass right here it's maybe two feet deep right here come on out of here that was cool i hope it showed up on the video maybe we can see there's a there's a big giant manatee out here with a, a baby calf I'm assuming that's what you call them. I don't know about the baby. And that's pretty cool. They'll, the dolphins, they'll come right up to our dock and swim underneath our dock, chasing the fish up against the, the seawalls. It's pretty neat watching that. Kiki, y'all have met Kiki. She goes crazy over that. She thinks she owns the canal, so every time a boat comes up the canal, she barks at them. Going this other canal over here. These are bigger homes over here on the side. Very, very clear right now. The sun's coming up. I like to check out how people have their houses in the, the back areas. Morning, how are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm cheating right now. <laughs> Everybody's super friendly around here. He was talking about me uh, using the motor, I'm not paddling. Said I look super comfortable. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> this kind of kayak is very, 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 very stable. And it goes over there on that side. Water's probably about 12 feet deep right in here. That's why the dolphins hunt so much in here because the water's not deep and the fish will all come up in here and they just kind of school them up and they don't have nowhere to go. No, like I said, they'll they'll like push them up against the, the sea walls here and, and trap them up underneath the docks and stuff like that. That's pretty cool when they come up with a big giant fish and they're like, dang it. Did you see the dolphin out there? Did you see the dolphin? Yeah, there were dolphins, right? They were all out like that. Yeah, right in the seagrass. Yeah, I just saw him a minute or two ago. You seen the manatee out here with the baby? You haven't seen that? I haven't seen it in about a week or so. Yeah, that we live over on the other canal and it was over there. Oh, yeah, lots of babies in here, yeah, yeah. All right, you guys have a great weekend.
Thank you too. See what I mean about people being super friendly? Check out this house being built right on the corner. That's a, gonna be a beautiful home, man. Right on the, right on the corner of the canal. So you, the golf is right there. And the canal entrance is right there. It's gonna be a really beautiful home. So straight ahead is another marina at the very ends of the canal system where the canal basically meets the road are marinas and uh, there's pretty much one on every well there's only one two four roads here i think and um that they all have marinas they call that uh, the sunset deck people go up there sunset with their cocktails and stuff and, and watch the sunset So we're fixing to make the turn from the golf going into our canal. Go around this turn right here. So there's a lot of sheep head. I don't know if people know what the sheep head is, but a lot of sheep head up in here because they eat the barnacles off of all the docks and the rocks and the riffraff and stuff. This is going into ours. And I'll kind of give you a shot of our dock system. So we got uh, the two jet skis and the Tritoon. And the dock's big enough where we can launch the kayaks off of it. A lot of people, believe it or not, go swimming in here. So some people don't have swimming pools and uh, they go swimming in the canal, which should be fine. This is coming up on the right. But as you can tell, it's very, very, very quiet. So that's our setup right there. We've got the kayaks, or I'm sorry, the jet skis, the dock, our lift with our tritune. That's home.